Hello, kind people and future LPTs. Welcome to another episode of our Let's Review series. And on this episode, we're going to rationalize science questions for the science specialization for the upcoming September 2023 licensure examination for professional teachers. Now, before anything else, let me remind you again of the importance of manifestation and testing the law of attraction no so claim it that you are going to get that license that you are going to pass the board exam and even tap the board exam okay so your mind is so powerful so the more positive things that we attract so the more uh, likely is it that the result will be positive as well so claim that you already pass and even tap the board exam i just want to share this one so i posted this last january 30 and december 19 2022 so i posted this on my facebook account and as you can see <laughs> i am claiming it already that i i am going to tap the board exam no so and in jesus name so faith as well as very much important all right, so I am pretty sure some of you are already posting on your social media accounts like Top Natural Cutie, you know, LPT Cutie, and that's good, okay? So that's, uh, this is an example, this post, this is an example of me post um, testing the, the law of attraction. <laughs> this is sort of like my affirmation to myself, one of the things that I really want to to say to myself and i want myself to believe in so uh, i manifested it already that i am going to tap the board exam and so it happened so ganyan ka powerful ang mind natin all right so believe it huh? claim it maniwala ka sa sarili mo and most importantly maniwala ka din sa panginoon okay so pray before during and after the board exam manalangin ka because in the board exam it will only be you and god you cannot talk to the person beside you you cannot talk to the person you know in the classroom all right you cannot ask questions except for the proctor of course you can ask questions but sa kapwa mo uh, na nag take ng board exam Oh, hindi ka pwedeng magtanong because kapag nakita ka na that you are asking questions, so that's a violation, that's punishable by law. So maaring hindi ka na ulit makapag-take. No, oh, so it will only be between you and God. Okay? So si si God lang talaga ang uh, pwede mong kausapin pagdating sa board exam. So believe and have faith eventually your hard work will pay off so as you can see ang tagal na ng post na ito january 30 and i took the board exam march 20 march 19 2023 so it takes a lot of patience and understanding no that lahat ng mga sacrifices mo ngayon it will eventually pay off at mag magbubunga din lahat ng iyan okay so maniwala ka napakahalaga ng yung pananalig at ng belief mo sa iyong sarili all right sige so we'll start with the first question what is the highest level in taxonomy all right, I am pretty sure memorized nyo na ang levels of taxonomy and kabisadong kabisado nyo na ito. This is a piece of cake. No, this is easy peasy. So, the highest level in taxonomy, that is the domain. All right, so memorize these levels uh, in taxonomy from domain up until the species. Okay, dream ko pumasa because our family gets sweldo. So, the options might be 
uh, it might not be the same. O, pag walang domain, so we can answer kingdom. Tapos, pag walang kingdom, then we'll go to the next phylum, no? So, depending on the options given. So, that's why we need to memorize these levels uh, uh, in taxonomy, right? So, memorize this one. Okay, next. The following are domains of life except, uh, except this is prokaryota. Just remember the domains of life, three domains of life. We have bacteria, archaea, and uh, eukarya. So, itong bacteria, uh, the domain bacteria, uh, ito yung walang nucleus to mga prokaryotes. No, ang bacteria, mga prokaryotes. Wala silang membrane browned na organelle. Uh, basta pag uh, prokaryotes, that is referring to the bacteria. Right? The archaea naman, the domain archaea, ito yung mga um, prim, um, primitive, mga ancient microorganisms. So, yan yung archaea, ha? So, mga ancient microorganisms. So, yan yung keyword natin. Primitive, ancient, uh, mga extremophiles ito. They can live under extreme conditions. No? So, itong mga archaea. And the domain eukarya, of course, it can be a unicellular um, protist, you know, like protist, and multicellular as well, like plants, and of course, animals, you know, including us human beings. So, yan yung sa eukarya. Okay, remember the three domains of life, beya or be, or depending on sa'yo yan, beya. Okay, bacteria, eukarya, and the archaea. So, hindi kasali is the prokaryota. Next. Let's take a look at the six kingdoms of life. We have the animalia, animals, plantea, no? plants, fungi, protist, and the bacteria, and the ancient bacteria. So, six ang kingdoms na ito. This is kay, kay Wu's. And kapag uh, makikita, makikita ka ng five lang yung kingdoms, kanang isa lang tong bacteria and the ancient bacteria under kingdom Bonera. Okay? Kay Whitaker naman yun. No, bacteria and ancient bacteria under kingdom Monera. Okay, again, memorize dream ko po masa because our family gets swelled up, or you can create your own mnemonics. Okay, depende sa inyo kung paano nyo. Mas madaling ma remember instead of memorizing all of this. So, use uh, mnemonics, you can make your own. All right, so yeah, let's proceed. Two organisms can be identified belonging to the same species if they can, if they can. Breed in a natural setting. Remember this, ha? Matatawag lang natin ng organism ay same sila ng species kapag walang human intervention o wal hindi hybrid, uh, natural lang na setting. No, They mate and reproduce in a natural setting. Ibig sabihin, same sila ng species. Now, let's take a look at um, organisms na hindi same species yung parents nila, gaya ng mule. O the mule... Yung parents niya ay horse tsaka donkey. Di ba? Hindi naman same species na ang horse at donkey. Pero, uh, due to human intervention, no, and artificial insemination, yan, yung mga breeding, so, pwede silang mag-produce ng offspring. Oh, ito yung result, the mule. Pero, ang mule ay hindi siya pwedeng mga nak. Alright? Hindi, hindi siya fertile. Ha? So, mamamatay lang siya, ganyan. Hindi, it is not able to produce an offspring. Ito namang nasa upper right, we have the liger. No? That's the lion and the tiger. Diba? Hindi naman same species ang lion and tiger, but they can produce an offspring due to um, human intervention. So, yan yung definition natin ng species. Ha? Remember, matatawag lang natin na same yung species nila, baka pag, they can reproduce in a natural na setting, alright? Okay, next. The use of two-word names in naming organisms is called two-word names. That is, the binomial nomenclature, or, or the scientific name, alright? The scientific name. So, as you can see in the picture, that's an onion, a red onion. So, the scientific name is Allium sepa. Oh, and this is the right way in ri of writing the scientific name. So, the genus should be, the first letter should be capitalized. And for the species, the, it should be, the letters should be in lowercase no, or small letter. 
So yeah, this is the proper way, and you can you have to it italicize it or um underline it. All right. Uh, question: Ano ba ang meron sa scientific name? Oh, that is the genus and the species. All right. Two word naming, binomial nomenclature, or what we call the scientific name. Um, tayo human beings. What's our scientific name? That's Homo sapiens. Okay, mga Homo sapiens tayo human beings. Okay. Next question number five. Sahara is too desert. Arctic is too blank. Arctic, Arctic. Diba? Malamig sa Arctic. That is tundra. Alright? Tundra. Sahara, oh, desierto, largest hot desert, the Sahara. And the Arctic naman, it is the coldest, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's not the coldest. Um, Antarctic. Antarctic pala yun, Antarctic. Antarctic is the largest um, cold desert, right? So, technically, the Arctic is still a desert kasi nga, it is treeless, no? La tundra is treeless region, treeless area. Uh, but the Sahara, uh, hot desert, tapos the Arctic, that is tundra, all right? So, again, yeah, let's take a look at uh, the major classifications of our biomes. So, maraming classification ang biomes, but ito yung major classifications niya. We have the tundra, um, o kagay kanina, the Arctic, the Antarctic as well is also, also tundra. Then, we have taiga. Ang keywords natin dito sa taiga is boreal forest, no, yung... Uh, sa movie na Twilight, no, yung area kung saan nag-fight sila, sina Edward Cullen, yun, no, that's boreal forest. So, that's taiga na bayom. Then, going closer to the equator, which is, the temperature is increasing, no, from, from tundra up until the tropical, yung temperature niya is increasing. So, sa temperate area, ito naman yung area na Yung may four seasons, tsaka yung time na, na yung mga trees na nagiging yellow or orange. No? So, that's the temperate, deciduous forest. Examples, um, areas uh, of Korea, in Japan, yeah, no? Na nakikita natin sa mga K-drama. <laughs> so, that's deciduous forest. That's temperate biome. And of course, we have tropical, oh, the Philippines, we are under this biome, and the most abundant forest in tropical areas is we have the depterocarp, dep okay, depterocarp uh, na forest, depterocarp, and that's the most abundant in the Philippines, Abund most abundant forest. All right, so I hope this is clear. Now, we're going to proceed to the next question. Which biomes grows tropical grassland with scattered individual trees? Then the aninyo kapag scattered individual trees, that is referring to the savanna. And this is the setting in the movie The Lion King, right? No? Nakikita na ba kayo ng Lion King na movie? Diba? This is the area. Scattered individual trees, that is savanna. All right. Next. Of the following biological levels of organization, which represents the smallest or lowest level, that is, the tissues. So, kapag merong cell dito sa options, then of course, we can answer cell, alright? So, memorize these levels of, or uh, biological levels of organization from cells to the biosphere, okay? Memorize this one. Sige, next. Oh, this one, attachment of an orchid to a tree. Very obvious. And paulit-ulit na itong tinatanong. Of course, this is commensalism. Okay? Orchid to a tree. The birds nest into a branch of a tree. So, the one organism is benefited while the other is unaffected. Alright? That is commensalism. So, I hope klarong-klaro na itong mga species interactions ay niyo, ha? So, let's take a look at mutualism, of course. It's symbiosis, symbiotic relationship between two or more species that benefit from each other. So, example, the humans and the gut bacteria, the bees and the flower, or 
the butterfly and the flower, the clownfish and the sea anemone. We have ants and the aphids. Tapos, uh, we have the lichens, you know, fungi and the algae. And of course, the wally bat and the pitcher plant. So, yun, mga uh, mutual, mutualism ang kanilang interaction. So, yep. Okay, let's have commensalism, gaya kanina. O, yung mga epiphytes na halaman, gaya ng orchids. Epiphytes, o, yan yung mga halaman which attaches to the branches of the tree. O, yung relationship, relationship nila with the tree, that's commensalism. Okay? So, I hope klaro na ito. Then, of course, we have parasitism. Yung isa na harm, tapos yung isa naman naka-benefit. Yung tick and the dog, the hookworms and humans, uh, and so on. So, ito yung mga examples of parasitism. Okay, uh, let's take a look at these pictures. So, on the upper left, uh, the hyena and the lion. No, so, sa Lion King. Um, nagkukumpit sila sa kanilang source of food. So, their relationship, oh, they are in competition. Alright? Competition. Kasi nagkukumpit sila sa source of food. Then, on the lower left picture, oh, so nakikita nyo, yung cow, kinain niya yung, uh, yung dalawang cows, kinain nila yung um, grass. Tapos, the part of the grass is only being eaten. So, part lang yung being eaten then that is grazing okay grazing oh yung mga cows mga carabaos uh goats no yung mga grazing animals only part is being eaten okay and on the upper um right oh, as you can see the cheetah so kakainin niya yung kawawa naman to um about the antelope, no? So, kakainin niya. So, this is an example of predation. No, there is an act of killing. So, the cheetah here is the predator, while here, the antelope, yan yung prey, okay? Yung prey, yung kinakain. Alright, and on the lower right picture, so this is an example of aminsalism. No, yung allelopathy ng plants. So, some plants, they release toxic chemicals uh, or some chemicals that inhibit the growth of the surrounding plants. Alright? Yan. So, that's allelopathy. Um, yung uh, isa is the harm. Tapos, yung isa naman is unaffected lang siya. Alright? That's amensalism. Okay, next. What is the beneficial effect of scientific development on education? Oh, as you can see from the options, alin ba dito yung may connect sa when, it, when we talk about education? Of course, that's the knowledge source. So, kaya nga, every time there is a new discovery in the scientific world due to the advancement of technology, so, uh, i-include natin yan sa ating uh, curriculum, sa ating uh, lesson sa sa classroom, alright? So, yan, access to knowledge source. Okay? Okay, I hope uh, this is clear. Next, we have genetic disorders can be caused by uh, gene mutations, changes in chromosome number, changes in chromosome structure. Lahat ng ito ay mga rason kung bakit may genetic disorders. Okay? 11. The synthesis of an RNA molecule from a DNA template is known as. Uh, this is about the central dogma. And dapat memorize ni na rin itong central dogma. So, from DNA to RNA, that is transcription. And RNA to protein, that is translation. Okay? So, DNA is being replicated or duplicated in the S phase of the cell cycle. But then again, DNA to RNA, that's transcription. Kapag RNA to DNA naman, that's reverse transcription. Okay, remember RNA to protein, that is translation. Okay, this is the central dogma. Okay, I hope uh, memorized nyo na ito. Next, number 12. 
the set of observable characteristics. Kapag sinasabi nating observable, we are referring to the phenotype, of course. The phenotype, that's the set of observable physical traits. So, for example, the color, the color of, of that flower, the color of, for example, in humans, the color of your eyes, the iris of your eyes. Oh, ano ba yung hair mo? Is it straight? Is it wavy? Hmm. That's an example of phenotype, no? observable na physical characteristics. Tapos, when we talk about genotype, of course, that is referring to the genetic information. Alright? So, either homozygous ba siya, dominant, heterozygous, homozygous, recessive, yan. Uh, that's the genotype. Okay? Uh, pag, uh, on the other side, diba? So, the phenotype, oh, either purple, purple, then we have white, oh, yan, yung color na nakikita natin. Oh, that's an observable trait. So, that is the phenotype. Alright, next. Because it will adversely affect the population's food supplies. Oh, look at the options. Alin ba dito yung kinakain ng tao? Of course, mga halaman, no? the plants. It will affect our food supply. Alright, next. We should be following is not a function of mitosis in humans. Remember, not a function, of course, uh, the production of gametes. Because sa meiosis na yon na function. Okay? So, ito yung mga function of mitosis. We have growth, the wound repair, embryonic movement. So, take a look at this um, Venn diagram. So, I'm not going to read all of this one. But I just want you to read it on your own and understand and if not, you memorize the things that is written here because there will be questions about this one, mitosis and meiosis, because this is a foundation when we talk about the, in biology, you know. So, meron talaga ang questions about um, meiosis and saka mitosis. So, as you can see, meron namang sa similarities. Uh, meron din silang similarities. Okay, this is a Venn diagram. The comparison and contrast of mitosis and meiosis. All right, next, number 15. A phage, which is a short for bacteriophage, is a type of, that is, a virus. Okay, yung bacteriophage, that is a virus that invades bacterial cells. All right. Tapos, as you can see, this is the bacteriophage anatomy. Meron siyang capsid head. <laughs> capsid head. <laughs> so, capsid head. Uh, that's the protein coat of the head of the virus. Alright? The capsid. Yan. So, again, bacteriophage. That is a virus that invades bacteria cells. Okay? All right, number 16. A certain breed of chickens has two kinds, one with black feathers, uh, this is feathers, while the other has white feathers. Okay, tandaan ha, ang isa black, ang isa white. When the two kinds of chickens are uh, breed together, their offspring had both white and black feathers. So, parang may puntik-puntik, no? <laughs> parang Dalmatian. Uh, this situation showcases which law of genetics now i remember the laws of genetics that is the law of independent assortment and co-dominance okay co-dominance kasi nga nakita yung white at black na uh, nakita sa kanyang physical na trait no co-dominance yung dalawa so gregor mendel the mendelian inheritance Principal Gregor Mendel is the father of genetics, the father of heredity. So, yung foundation ng genetics ay established ni Gregor Mendel when he was studying the pea plant, uh, which is yung scientific name niya ay Pisum sativum. So, monk itong si Gregor Mendel. So, study siya sa garden. And yun, napansin niya. And he was able to establish these laws of um, genetics. So, law of segregation, the law of independent assortment, tapos the law of dominance. Yan. So, pag dominant yung dalawang alleles ng, ng organism, oh, so that is yung offspring niya kapag na-inherit or kapag sh showing yung 
um, trait na yan sa kanyang offspring. So, there is a dominant trait. Alright, so as you can see on the upper right picture, so itong cow, we have the white cow and the red cow, tapos yung offspring nila, nila ay roan, o oh, may puntik-puntik, so this is an example of co-dominance. Gaya din ng kanina, the black and the white na chicken, tapos yung anak nila, yung offspring nila is black and white, no? may, may black and white na color. That's co-dominance. Same din sa dog, no? no so Dalmatians. Then we have incomplete dominance. Ano naman tong incomplete? As you can see, uh, the red na parent, tsaka yung white, then yung offspring nila is pink. Hmm. Incomplete yung dominance. Okay, so let's proceed to the next. By the way, uh, as you can see, I I am uh, explaining things faster <laughs> because this is the final coaching at malapit na ang inyong board exam so dapat alam nyo na ang mga bagay na ito by now because these are essential na mga topics para na kailangan yung maintindihan or malaman before the board exam okay so mahalaga na before the board exam, yung mga topics na binabasa mo or the, ano ba, mga pinapanood mo, <laughs> kung ano-ano mga pinapanood mo dyan, di ba, sa mga final coaching, napaka ang mga topics na yan ay mga essential. Kailangan yung mga essential na topics. Di ba, because pag take mo ng board exam, the more recent yung mga essential topics na nalaman mo, mas ma-remember mo yun. Remember the law of recency ni uh, Thorndike, no? the law of recency. So, the more recent the knowledge, uh, the, be the the higher chance na ma-remember mo yun during the board exam. Okay? So, mga essential na lang na topics ang kailangan mong basahin, lalo na kapag papalapit na papalapit na ang board exam. Okay? Sige, let's proceed to number 17. Since most organisms consume more than one type of animal or plant or consume both. Oh, more than one type. So, it is complex already. So, hindi na siya pwedeng food chain. This is food web already, okay? Food chain, that's only the series of um, food mechanism or the energy transfer between an organism to a different organism. Tapos, when we talk about food web, mas complicated siya, no? Kasi, yung or isang organism, more than one type of food or one type of animal or plant ang kanyang kinakain. So, it's a complex web already. And remember these terms, the producer, the primary consumer, secondary consumer, and the tertiary consumer. So, the grass is a producer. They can produce their own food. No? They use the radiant energy from the sun to create their food and we know that that's the process we call photosynthesis all right so the grass um other species of bacteria such as the cyanobacteria yeah they can also photosynthesize meaning they can create their own food tapos in this food chain the grasshopper consume the grass so kaya siya yung tawag na primary consumer. Okay? The primary consumer, sila yung kumaka kumakain sa producer. And then, yung grasshopper, kinain siya ng frog. So, the frog is the secondary consumer. Then, the phyton, kinain niya yung frog. So, the phyton becomes the tertiary consumer. So, there will always be questions about this one. So, sa time namin, sa science specialization, ang daming tanong about the food chain. Oh, like this one. And take note, kung ano lang yung given, dapat yun lang yung isagot mo. For example, uh, yung situation is yung tao, kinain niya yung vegetable. O, oh, I mean, kumain siya ng vegetable. So, question, ano ang tawag natin sa tao na yun? O, oh, anong tawag natin sa tao? Uh, ang tao ba ay omnivore, carnivore, or herbivore? O based doon sa sa situation, syempre yung yung vegetable lang yung kinain niya. So, yung tao is a herbivore, okay? An an herbivore pala. No herbivore. Kasi ah uh, yung plants lang yung kinain niya. 
So, you have to base it on the situation given. Ha? Huh? Oh, remember that. Okay? Sige. Next. Um, RNA differs from DNA in all of the following except one. Uh, let's take a look at option A. RNA contains uracil, where DNA doesn't contain uracil. Okay, this is correct. No? Yung RNA, uracil. Tapos yung DNA, hindi siya uracil kasi uh, yung na, uh, base pair ng adenine is thymine. Thymine siya sa DNA, hindi uracil. Letter B, RNA is a single-stranded. That's correct. Tapos DNA is double-stranded. That is also correct. Letter C, RNA contains ribose. Oh, this is the sugar. RNA, that's ribose. Tapos the DNA, that's deoxyribose. Oh, tama din ang letter C. So, obviously, the answer here would be the letter D. RNA is not normally found in human cells where DNA is. Hindi ba nga RNA, kailangan siya, the RNA molecule needed siya for protein synthesis. Oh, di ba? RNA to protein, that is translation. Oh, Siyempre, present siya. Okay, except naman kasi yung hinahanap natin. And again, careful with these words, except always, yan, mga um, pangpalito na no words. O, oh, yung mga all, uh, kapag may nakita ka sa options na, uh, may word na all, most probably, yan yung uh, hindi natin hinahanap kasi generalized na niya. Anyway, let's proceed to the next question. The source of energy is an ecosystem in an ecosystem. Of course, we have the sunlight, right? So, yung kinakain mo dyan, yung energy na nakukuha mo dyan is can be traced back into the energy from the sun. All right? Number 20. Peter and Daisy are two amateur, amateur fossil hunters who were unable to unearth complete fossil mammals. And how could they determine whether it was a herbivore, a carnivore, or an omnivore? Okay, this is just um, based on the type of teeth, of course. Diba nga? For example, the dinosaur. We have, the fos we have fossil records of dinosaurs and um, paano natin na-identify na yung dinosaur na yan, that's a uh, herbivore or a carnivore or an omnivore. <laughs> no, basing on the fossils, basing on the type of teeth na meron um, isang organism. Alright, syempre kapag carnivores, um, uh, it requires a different set of teeth, no? Siyempre, iba naman yung karne kaysa sa halaman lang. O, iba din yung set of teeth nila. Alright? So, based on the type of teeth, malalaman natin na ang isang organism, ano ba siya? Uh, herbivore ba siya? Carnivore ba siya? No? Or an omnivore ba siya? Alright? So, that's one of the bases. Next, the technology that uses plants to break down or concentrates toxic waste in the soil. Kapag plants, plants, that is phyto. Alright, phytoremediation. Kapag microorganisms, oh, yung bacteria, kapag gumamit ng microorganisms, that is bioremediation. Kapag plants, phytoremediation. Next, when a plant cell is placed in a hyper, hyper, that shrink, hyper, shrink, okay, shrink, my R, hypertonic, kapag walang shrink, you can answer plasmolized, all right? The cell, plasmolized, no, plasmolysis, hypertonic, hypotonic naman, that's cytolysis, okay? It will swell, it will expand, yan. Tapos isotonic, oh, this is the ideal solution, no, equal lang yung solute at saka solvent, so it's awesome. <laughs> no, isotonic, equal. Okay, in which organelles of both plants and animal cells does aerobic respiration take place? That is in mitochondria. 
syempre, mitochondria, aerobic respiration or the cellular respiration, the ATP production, the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, yan, no? So, here, the as you can see in the picture, cellular respiration. So, meron siyang three main processes. We have the glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and last one is the electron transport system. Okay? So, this is the cellular respiration, aerobic respiration. Ibig sabihin, kailangan merong presence of oxygen. Okay? Next, living things are classified uh, either aerobic or, sinabi ko na, either aerobic or anaerobic as they grow or metabolize in the presence or absence of, uh, syempre, oxygen. Aerobic, merong oxygen. Tapos, anaerobic, it does not require oxygen. Okay, next, coronavirus disease 2019 is caused by, that is SARS-CoV-2, huh? COVID-2, not one, SARS-CoV-2 na virus. Because meron ang nauna na coronavirus way back 2020, uh, 20, 2002 to 2004, yon. So, itong COVID-19, Oh, yeah, pangalawa na siya na coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, uh, coronavirus disease 2019. Next, what do you call the process wherein plants make their own food? Um, Siyempre, photosynthesis, sana nga, <laughs> ganito na lang ang mga questions sa board exam. Photosynthesis, now remember photosynthesis, um, ano ba yung raw materials na kailangan niya? Siyempre, the carbon dioxide, tapos water, tapos merong sunlight as catalyst, and end product niya is oxygen and the glucose. So, remember photogo, photogo, photosynthesis, the end product is glucose and oxygen. Cellular respiration, the end product is carbon dioxide and water. Alright, remember that, ha? Photogo, cell you CW. Next, here is uh, yung photosynthesis. Uh, diba? Mga science majors, alam natin that there is more to the process of photosynthesis. Meron tayong light reaction and the dark reaction. The light reaction, that's also known as the light-dependent reaction. Uh, that is happening in the thylakoid membrane. Ha? Thylakoid. So, yung water... Uh, ano yung result niya? Oxygen. So, pagtanong, saan galing yung oxygen sa, sa photosynthesis? Galing sa water. Okay? Sa H2O. Now, let's go to the Calvin cycle or also known as the dark reaction or um, the dark independent reaction. Okay? That's the Calvin cycle. Ano naman yung product niya is sugar. Saan galing yung sugar? Sa carbon dioxide. Saan siya nangyayari? Ang Calvin cycle, ang dark reaction sa stroma. Kanina, yung light reaction sa thylakoid, so ang Calvin cycle sa stroma. And itong lahat ng processes na ito, it occurs in the organelle, what we call chloroplast which is only found in plant cells all right the chloroplast oh, yan yung site for photosynthesis okay sige next what is the branch of zoology that is devoted to the study of birds birds ang cute cute naman ng mga birds <laughs> birds that's ornithology okay birds ornithology ang commonly tinatanong is yung birds saka the fishes uh, kapag fish naman that's etiology. Ha? Fishes, etiology. Birds, ornithology. Itong herpetology, this is the study of the reptiles. Mm. Cytology, that is for the cells. Okay, the cells. All right, 28. Dialysis is used if there is a failure of. Dialysis, that's kidney. Okay, kidney. And kidney, that's the main organ of our body to, to regulate or to remove the toxic materials of our body. No, napakahalaga ng ating kidney. Then we have the heart, of course, the pumping organ and the lungs. We have two lungs in the human body. Um, the right lung is composed of three lobes and the left one has two lobes okay that's the main organ for respiration uh, for the respiratory system 
And we have pancreas. Ang question dito is the hormones na nire-release ng pancreas. We have the insulin and glucagon. When you talk about insulin, ito yung hormone that lowers the blood sugar level. And the glucagon, it increases naman no, the sugar level of uh, the, the sugar level in our blood. Okay? Insulin lowers, glucagon increases. Kaya nga, itong yung mga taong may diabetes, um, they would inject insulin, di ba? To lower the sugar level, level in their blood. Okay? That's the pancreas. 29. Which of the following groups of organisms is a very good source of antibiotics? So, uh, it is caused no, by a bacterial infection. So, of course, a good source of antibiotics would be the Penicillium notatum. And this on the picture is Alexander Fleming, which is, I mean, who is the penicillin discoverer. Okay, so na discover niya ang um, penicillin in what we call a happy accident or serendipity. Okay, so kapag bacterial infection, ang kailangan natin ay antibiotics. And kapag viral infection naman, meaning it is caused by a, by a virus, so vaccine naman ang kailangan natin. Kaya nga, COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus, so that's why we need the vaccine. Okay, bacteria, antibiotics, virus, vaccine. Okay, next, which of the following is not true of fungi? Not true of fungi? Uh, look at the options. Not ang hinahanap natin, ha? So, our answer for this one would be letter B. Some are photosynthetic, which is not true. Okay, kasi lahat ng fungi, lahat ng organisms that belong to kingdom fungi ay heterotrop. Meaning, hindi sila capable of creating their own food. So, options A, C, and D are all correct. Some are pathogenic. That's true. Some are edible. Diba? Some species of mushrooms are edible. Then, they form symbiotic relationship with algae. No? Tinatawag natin lichens. No? The relationship is mutual relationship between the fungi and the algae. Okay? So, not ang hinahanap natin. So, some are photosynthetic because fungi ay heterotrop. Now, let's take a look at the different types of heterotrop. So, we have holozoic organisms. So, example tayo, we are holozoic organisms. We ingest and internally digest the food particles. Tapos, meron namang heterotrop na parasites. They feed on a host organism, obtaining nutrition at host expense. So, yung example, the leeches, uh, which facilitates anticoagulation. Alright? The leeches. So, they are parasites. Then, the next type, we have the saprophytes. They feed on dead and decaying organisms by releasing extracellular enzymes. Okay, so the saprophytes. Yan. So, uh, ito yung mga different types of heterotroph, the holozoic, the parasites, and the saprophytes. Kapag may nakikita kang feed on dead organism, you can answer scavenger. No, Kapag mayroong scavenger sa options, we can answer scavenger. Pero kapag it feeds on dead and necrotic matter, so our answer for that one would be the yeast. Okay? Fungi. Alright? Sige. Next, amoeba proteus is a very common amoeba that you use in the laboratory for experiments. What do they use for locomotion? Kapag amoeba, ang ginagamit nila ay sodopodia. Also known as false feet. Alright, so the podia, that's false feet. Next, 32. The organelle that breaks down, breaks down, kapag breaks down, the suicide bag, that is the lysosome. 
Okay, the break that breaks down lipids, carbohydrates, proteins into small simpler form to be used by the cell. That is the role of the lysosome. The vacuole, of course, that's the biggest um, organelle in plants, and the vacuole stores water. It stores minerals. No? Ribosome, of course, that's the protein synthesis, and the Golgi complex. Uh, here, also known as the Golgi body, Golgi apparatus, uh, it modifies proteins and lipids, process materials to be removed from the cell, it makes and secrete mucus, it packages products into vesicles for transport. Okay, that's the role of the Golgi complex, the Golgi body, or the Golgi apparatus. So, I'm, I am expecting that by now, you are familiar already with the parts, with the organelles of the cell and its, and its function, okay? So, there will always be questions about the parts of the cell. Okay, next, the processes of removing harmful bacteria from packaged or unpacked milks and juices by applying mild heat. That is referring to pasteurization. No, in honor of Louis Pasteur. So, itong pasteurization, oh, for example, here in the picture, the milk pasteurization. So, he, uh, meron siyang nalawang uh, processes. We've got the heating section, tapos right after the cooling section naman siya. Oh, ganyan, fresh milk and cow, tapos it is being pasteurized. Alright, so that's pasteurization. Mild heat lang ha, applying mild heat. Para hindi naman madinature yung proteins. So, mild lang na heat ang kailangan. Alright, 34. What ecological structure is formed by a group of individuals of the same species living together in the same area? That is referring to the population. Same lang ang species, ha? Hindi pwedeng bilangin mo. For example, ilan ba ang population ng dogs sa inyong, sa inyong barangay? Oh. Siyempre, yung bibilangin mo yung dogs lang, hindi kasali yung cats. Kasi, hindi naman sila same species. Oh, patawag natin na, that they belong to uh, a, a certain population kapag same sila na species. And within a specific area within a specific territory. Ganyan ang population ha. Same species, living together in the same area within a specific time then. Okay? That's population. Now, what's the difference between the habitat and the niche? As we can see in the option, uh, options, we have the niche and the option A. So, ano ba tong niche and habitat? Common terminologies when we talk about the ecosystem. Kapag sinasabi nating habitat, that is the ideal place where an organism lives. Okay? Lives. <laughs> Tapos na niche naman, yan yung role. Just remember, niche, role. Role niya sa community and how it interacts with the environment. Okay, that's the niche, that's the role, the habitat is the place kung saan siya nakatira. Now, here is an example. Yung habitat nila, the parrot, the honeybee, and the squirrel, yung habitat nila is the tree. Now, ano yung role nila? Yung parrot, or reproduction of species, that's the role of the parrot. Then, the honeybee, or they produce food, they are pollinators. No? Then the squirrel, or the germination of seeds naman yung role niya. That's their niche, okay? The role. Next question, 35. Excessive presence of carbon dioxide in the air, trapping heat near the Earth's surface, causing a rise in temperature in the environment. That is referring to the greenhouse effect. Trapping of heat near the Earth's surface, kaya hindi siya masyadong um, nakapag-escape sa ating atmosphere which is supposedly babalik siya sa space pero because of the greenhouse gases an example of greenhouse gas is a carbon dioxide o oh, yan, so, sobrang init na ngayon because there is an increase of a rapid increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere due to industrial processes, burning of fossils, mga human activities. Okay, so here in this question, the statement we are referring to the greenhouse effect. 36. 
which of the following is an element? Element. Okay. So, our answer for this one would be letter C, the gold. No, 24 karat gold because the rest are compound already. Now, let's take a look at this diagram. We have matter. So, it can be divided into either pure substance or a mixture. Kapag sinasabi natin pure substance, pwede siyang element or compound. Huh? Element or compound. That's a pure substance. So, ibig sabihin, ang element, ang compound ay pure substance. And when we talk about mixture naman, ito yung pwede mas separate physically. Ha? Mixture. It is either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Homogeneous mixture, that is one phase, o isa lang na phase ang ating nakikita. Heterogeneous naman, o more than one. Alright? Okay. So, next, uh, 37. Which branch of chemistry focuses on compounds containing carbon and hydrogen? Carbon bonded to hydrogen, that is organic chemistry. Organic chemistry. Example of organ examples of organic compound, we have DNA, methane, no, benzene, mga hydrocarbons. Diba? They are carbon-based compounds that are bonded to hydrogen. And when we talk about inorganic, um, commonly, wala siyang carbon and wala din siyang carbon that is bonded to hydrogen. So, we have salt. Salt is NaCl, di ba? Walang carbon bonded to hydrogen. Diamond. Di ba, ma'am? Diamond is purely carbon. Pero, uh, yes, that's true. But, um, uh, yung process ng pag-make uh, ng, ng diamond, no, no, ang... Um, process niya is walang involvement ng organism. Okay? So, it's not a, it's not an organic na compound na mineral, but it is inorganic. Alright? Now, carbon dioxide, no, that's CO2. Wala siyang carbon bonded to hydrogen. So, it's an inorganic compound. So, that's the main difference between organic and inorganic. Okay? Next question. According to Rutherford's calculations, the volume of an atom is mostly no get get naman eh. <laughs> Lolong Rutherford. But uh, we owe it to the um people like him. Ku ano man yung nalalaman natin today. No, so um by the way, you know famous scientists as well. You study their contributions. Because there might be questions about famous people, notable people in the field of science. Okay. So, according to Rutherford, that is an empty space. Okay. The volume of an atom is an empty space. Because these subatomic particles, the neutron, the protons, and the surrounding electrons, napakaliit lang ng mga particles na ito. In fact, we don't have a direct evidence na makapag... Uh, showing that there uh, there is uh, the presence of these subatomic particles. No, wala talagang direct na evidence. Because the atom is basically just an empty space. 99.9999% of an atom is an empty space. Okay, that's according to Rutherford. And Rutherford is also credited for the discovery of proton, proton, <laughs> protons. Okay, next. How many protons are present if an atom has a mass number of 23 and atomic number of 12? Oh, 12. That is, atomic number niya ay 12. Ibig sabihin, 12 din yung number of protons. Huh? In a neutral element, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. Tapos, equal din siya sa number ng electrons. No, pag neutral siya na element. Alright. So, ito yung anatomy ng ating atom. And in the middle, we have the nucleus comprised of proton and neutron, which is the mass is highly concentrated no, sa nucleus. Tapos, electrons naman, oh, that's the surrounding negatively charged particle. So, again, the atomic number, that's the number of protons. Tapos, yung mass niya, the mass of an atom is protons plus 
neutrons. Alright? Okay, next. What is the study of enzymes and enzyme cataly catalyzed reaction? Oh, that is enzymology. Enzymology. We have here enzymes. Oh, enzymes are proteins. Alright? Proteins to mga enzymes and they are very juicy. They are very picky. <laughs> so, as you can see in the picture, yung enzymes, tapos merong active site and we have a substrate. So, itong substrate na to, in, uh, uh, it would only fit sa sa enzyme. Ang ina-accept lang ng enzyme kapag oh, nag-fit yung substrate na yan. Kapag hindi yan fit sa active site ng enzyme o oh, hindi yan tatanggapin. So, ganyan ang enzyme. Very juicy, very picky and dapat uh, be like enzyme. Dapat uh, pareha tayo sa enzyme when we answer board exam questions. Hindi lang basta-basta na sasagot. So, we have to analyze it carefully. We have to rethink our choice. No? So, gaya ng enzymes. Again, enzymes are proteins. Okay? So, this is enzymology, enzymes, and the enzyme catalyst reactions. Okay. How are elements organized on the modern periodic table? How? How? The Carabao. That is based on increasing atomic number. Ha? Sequentially based on increasing atomic number. Di ba nga? Oh, here in the predictable, number one, hydrogen. We have two, helium. Three, lithium. Four, beryllium. Five, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, and so on. So, yan. As you can see, increasing yung atomic number niya. So, increasing din yung number of protons. Being 118 as the last element, organison. Okay? So, now, in the updated book, we have 94 natural elements. Okay, 94, ha? It's updated. 94 natural elements, yun yung found in the environment, and the rest of the elements are, phot uh, no, are synthetic, synthetic, which is made in the laboratory. Okay? Sige. Next. Atoms that achieve an octet by sharing electrons. Sharing, kapag sharing lang, that is covalent. Electron that is shared, that's covalent. And if it is transferred, that is ionic. Ha? Remember, ha? Shared, covalent, transfer, ionic. Next, 43. Which of the following does not belong to the group? Oh, alin ba dito? Pag hindi mo alam kung ano ang, ang isang element na iyan. So, parang mahirap-hirap, no? So, here, the answer would be the xenon, no? Xenon. The rest are metals. Calcium, cobalt, and iron are metals. The xenon is a noble gas. Okay? Noble gas ang xenon. Kaya, siya lang yung naiiba. The rest are metals. So, be familiar with the elements in the periodic table and memorize these on the upper right of the predictable and here from the family of boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon yan yung mga mahalaga yan no it will come in handy so i memorize mo yan ha or um you draw a predictable you paste it on your wall para every day makikita mo palagi ang predictable na yan kaya it would be easy for you to visualize kung ano yung mga nakikita mo every day okay so, this will come in handy kapag memorize mo ang predictable. Okay, next. 44, which of the following is not a description of H, B, R, O, for all? My H sa unahan, that is most probably an acidic compound. So, of course, not a description. pH is greater than 7 because yung pH na greater than 7, that is referring to a base. Now, let's take a look at options B, C, and D. Letter B, blue litmus paper turns red. That is a description of an acid. Penoptalin doesn't change color, correct? And it reacts with metals to form H2. And that is also correct. So, let's take a look at the pH scale. So, ranging from 0 to 14. Number 7, um, pH 7 being neutral, an example is water, that's an amphoteric substance. It can act as either a base or 
um, an acid. So, our blood, as you can see, it's slightly basic, no? Ang ating blood, ang, ang blood sa ating katawan, that's slightly basic. Uh, yeah, so, familiarize these um, mga substances as well, ha? Kasi, baka tanungin kung ano ba siya, acidic ba siya, or basic ba siya, no, alkaline ba siya. Yan. And, di ba yung mga basic na compounds, no, baking soda, ammonia, bleach, soap, drain cleaner, as you can see, parang, um, pang cleanest siya, even toothpaste, no, toothpaste is a basic na substance, pang cleanest siya, because, the basic proper, uh, yung basic property niya, it would react with the dirt, gaya ng sa ammonia, no, yung sa toothpaste, um, kaya, kailangan natin mag -tooth toothbrush, using a brush, <laughs> and a toothpaste, kasi, our mouth is acidic because of the food that we intake. So, naging acidic yung mouth natin. So, to neutralize our the pH level of our mouth, kaya kailangan natin mag-toothbrush. No? With the toothpaste, which is um, a base. Sige. So, as you can see in the upper right, we have here mga indicators no mga indicators ma some are natural indicator and some are synthetic so natural oh gaya nito red cabbage red onion turmeric itong panoptalin this is artificial or synthetic already so as you can see in the picture instant color change oh this is an example of turmeric ang ginamit dito yellow that's an acid red that's an indication that it is a base tapos the phenoptalin naman Kapag colorless, that's an acid. And if it is basic, it would turn pink. Alright? So, this is quite sort of magical. <laughs> no, when you do when you do experiments using penoptalin. So, pa siyang magic. But it's really just about acid and base reaction. <laughs> okay, next. 45. The oxidation of ethanol, C2H, 6OH produces. Oh, OH because it's... It's an alcohol, no, ethanol. When you talk about oxidation, this is, it means that there is an addi addition of oxygen. So, ano bang sagot natin dito? This is acetic acid. Oh, ito yung nasa vinegar, the acetic acid. Acetone, this is the simplest ketone. And formaldehyde is the simplest aldehyde. Now, now the formic acid, ito yung acid na, um, na nire-release ng ants, no? Ng bees, no? Formic acid. Kaya nga, kapag kinaga tayo ng langgam, we feel a stinging sensation. It's because of the formic acid. Ha? The formic acid. That's sa ants. Okay? And our answer for this one is the acetic acid. Okay, 46. Um... Carbon can exist with several different structures and so its atoms are arranged differently. What is this unique property of carbon? That this is the allotropy. Okay, allotropy. Now we have allotropes of carbon. We have graphite. Oh, ito yung nasa um, lead ng ating mga pencils. Okay, graphite. Then, we have diamond as well. That's still carbon, an allotrope of carbon. So, funny to think that the same substance na nasa lead ng ating pencils ay same <laughs> carbon pa rin na nasa diamond. No? But, different lang yung structures. So, that's allotropy. Now, we have here this word, catenation. Ano ba naman itong catenation? So, ito yung unique property ng carbon. Ibig sabihin, it is capable of uh, self-linking of atoms to form chains and rings. Diba nga yung carbon, it can link to another carbon and it can either be form, it can either form chains or rings, no? So, yung sa hydrocarbons natin, um, sa ating alkane, which is a single band, alkene, double band, and alkyne, triple band, then pas meron tayong ring naman or cyclic chain. So, Yun, yun yung, uh, it, this is the, one of the reasons kung bakit there are millions of organic compound, which is a carbon-based compound, because of this property of a carbon. No? And 
thousands lang few uh, thousands lang yung inorganic tapos millions yung organic compounds on earth no because of this unique property of a carbon okay next 47 what is the term involves using relationships between reactants and or products in a chemical reaction that is the stoichiometry ha huh? relationships between quantities in chemical reaction and i am hoping that by now alam niyo na kung paano magbalance ng chemical equation so just no, coefficients tell the relative number of molecules so i hope i really hope na alam niyo na kung paano magbalance and if you're still confused kung paano magbalance you can watch youtube tutorials that is a uh, simplified explanation of how to balance because tingnan mo lang talaga yung numbers ha huh? oh in this equation to yung coefficient ng hydrogen tapos yung subscript niya ay 2 rin so ibig sabihin may 4 no you just have to multiply that one multiply that one 4 hydrogens hydrogen tapos uh, 1 yung coefficient ng oxygen tapos may 2 siya na subscript so you just have to multiply that one so ibig sabihin dalawang oxygen na dalawang molecules ng oxygen and on the next on the other side oh, 2 times 2 sa hydrogen, 4 din yung hydrogen, tapos 2, uh, 0, ang walang, I mean, walang coefficient na nakalagay, ibig sabihin, not 0, uh, oxygen, <laughs> hindi siya 0, oxygen, uh, kapag walang nakalagaw, nakalagay, ibig sabihin, may 1 yan, ha? 1, oh, it is under understood that meron yung subscript na 1, so 2 times 1, that is 2, so, dalawang molecules ng oxygen. So, balance siya. 4 hydrogen and 2 oxygen. And on the other side, 4 hydrogen and uh, 2 oxygen. So, it is balance. Okay? So, I hope um, alam mo na kung paano magbalance because there might be questions about balancing. Okay? Malaki ang chance na merong question talaga about balancing. Kasi hindi ito lumabas sa time namin. Baka lalabas siya this September. Next, which of the following is not an example of a chemical reaction? Not an example. Chemical, ha? chemical reaction. That is, look at the options. What's our answer here? That is, blending of a vanilla milkshake. Ha? Blending of a vanilla milkshake. Uh, itong growing tomatoes, burning logs in a fireplace, digesting your dinner, oh, my chemical reaction na involved. Itong blending, this is a physical reaction only. Now, let's take a look at the differences between the two. When you say about chemical reaction, a chemical reaction forms a new product. Oh, example, oh, combustion. Kapag may combustion, yan, that's a chemical reaction. And there is fire involved, rotting. Oh, rotting of fruits. Yan, chemical reaction yan. Rusting. Oh, digestion. Yan. Mga chemical change. Physical change naman. Yung matter niya, it changes form but not chemical, but not the chemical identity. Oh, for example, melting. Oh, Nagme-melt lang naman siya. It, it changes um, the face. Oh, yung face niya. So, basta pag face changes that's physical. No, yung melting, yung boiling, freezing. No, yan. Physical yan ha. Sublimation, deposition, ano pa yun? No, physical change yun. Ha? No, shredding, chopping, o nag-change lang niya yung ang structure, but the chemical identity, yun, nandyan pa rin. Okay, na-shape lang, na-change lang niya yung shape, yung, yung um, structure niya, but, walang bagong product na na na, na produce all right okay okay next which of the following does do not dissolve in water oh syempre yung triglyceride because that is e lipid and a lipid is hydrophobic Ibig sabihin, takot sa water. Gaya ng oils, no? Kaya nga, hindi nagmi-mix ang oil and water because 
an oil is a lipid and takot siya sa water. Aside from the density difference ng oil at ng water, uh, it is because of the properties of the oil. Uh, it is hydrophobic. Alright? So, triglyceride. Oh, triglyceride. The glycerol and three fatty acid. This is the monomer of a lipid. Alright? Uh, let's take a look at our four macromolecules, four biomolecules. Yan. Memorize this one because there will always be questions about this one. This is also included in biochemistry. Carbohydrate, lipid, protein, and the nucleic acid. Yan. So, including their monomers, memorize that, the monomers. The carbohydrate, we have monosaccharide for the lipid. So, we have um, the fatty acid and triglyceride. triglyceride. So, trig, oh, no, no, fatty acid and glycerol. Oh, that's uh, yung itong glycerol, tapos fat, tatlong fatty acid. This is triglyceride, right? So, um, that's the monomer of lipids. Sa nucleic acid naman is the nucleotide. Tapos for the protein, that is amino acid. Okay, so memorize this, including the bond that is involved. No, it might be asked, as well as the function. No, energy source, yung carbohydrate, tapos short term lang siya, uh, storage. Tapos the lipid, that is also for long term storage. Alright, yung lipids. Tapos thermal insulation. No, kaya yung fats. No, that's, that's a lipid. Oh, kung mapapansin natin, yung mga taong medyo maraming fats sa kanilang katawan, matagal silang maka-feel ng, ng ginaw, di ba? <laughs> oh, for example, uh, like, like napapansin ko talaga to in a room, oh, in an air-conditioned room, ang pinakamadaling ginawin is yung tao uh, medyo payat, di ba? Oh, because ang fats ng katawan ay thermal insulation. Okay, lipids. That's a lipid. Next, okay, that's one of the role of the lip of the lipids. Nucleic acid, of course, it holds the genetic code, the genetic information that is referring to the DNA and the RNA, and proteins. So, maraming functions ang proteins. Sa ating katawan, mahalaga na kumain tayo ng mga karne. O, dyan natin nakukuha ang proteins. All right. And what, what is the organelle that is the site for protein synthesis? That is the ribosome. And ribosome is present in different, in all types of cell. Okay? Kasi kailangan ng protein ng organisms. Okay. Next. Which of the following is an extensive, extensive property? Pag sinabi natin extensive, that is... Okay, um, no, yung mass. That's an example of ex extensive. Extensive, it depends on how much matter a sample contains. Huh? That's extensive. Nakadepende siya sa amount of matter. Of course, the mass is directly proportional. That is super <laughs> related to the matter because the matter, the, the mass is the amount of matter. Then intensive, that is a property that do not depend on the amount of matter in a sample. Oh, for example, of intensive property, itong uh, options B and D. So, density, oh, kahit gaano pa karami. For example, for gold, oh, 1 kilogram of gold, tapos 20 kilograms of gold, same pa rin siya ng density. Okay? Yung density ng gold, yan pa rin yun, ang density ng uh, element na yan. Then, the melting point as well as the boiling point o oh, kahit 1 liter of water or 20 liters of water still, yung boiling point ng water is 100 degrees Celsius pa rin, ba? So, that's an intensive na property. Okay? As well as the color. And here, take a look at examples of extensive properties. We have volume, the mass, the size, the weight, and the length. So, yan. Nakadepende siya sa, adam, sa amount of matter of a sample. Okay? Sige. I hope this is clear. Now, we are going to proceed to 51. Which of the following is not a measurement? Oh, very obvious. Take a look at the options. Siyempre, yung walang unit. No? The 120 is just a number. Wala siyang 
wala siyang unit, hindi siya measurement. Next, the work accomplished by lifting an object against gravity. Against gravity. Oh, basta work, work. Oh, that is joules. Oh, yung unit niya, joules. Work, formula for work, we have force times displacement. And memorize these equations, these formulas, because this might come in handy. There might be questions, um, problem-solving questions that... Uh, you need to know the formula. Oh, pag hindi mo alam ang formula, medyo mahirap yun. So, we have for power naman, work over time, then potential energy, mgh, kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Oh, Inaawit-awit ko to <laughs> para madali kong ma-memorize. Okay, so use your own strategy. You might write this on your wall para palagi mong makita. And before I took the board exam, yung wall ko, sa aking room is full of equations. Like, almost all equations lang talaga siya. Okay, kasi, ang hirap kasi i-memorize ng equations. Kaya, kailangan mo siyang i-visualize. Dapat, um, makikita mo siya always. Nakikita mo siya always. Alright. So, yeah. Generally, sounds travel fastest in sound, sound, sound. Uh, sound is a mechanical wave and it needs a medium to to propagate. So, solids. No? Fastest siya sa solids. And hindi siya pwede sa vacuum kasi nga kailangan ng medium. Right? So, fastest ang sound sa, so, sa, no, sa solids. And look at the picture. So, I hear sound in one second. Oh, so summer. Tapos on winter, I hear sound in 1.5 second. So, yun. Uh, because the temperature also affects the the speed of the sound. No, when molecules at higher temperatures, uh, they have more energy and they can vibrate faster. And so, it allows the sound waves to travel more quickly, okay? When higher yung temperature. Alright? Sige, let's proceed to 54. What is the wave particle duality in quantum mechanics? Diba? Yung wave particle du duality ng light, that is the simultaneous. Ha? Simultaneous existence of particles and waves. So, kaya tinatawag natin duality because the light is either a wave or a particle. So, take a look at this one, the wave nature of light. Oh, it is determined. Yung determining fact factor niya is it has the ability to produce an interference pattern. Oh, the wave nature of light. Okay? So, wave nature uh, interference pattern, and we have de Broglie for that, the wave nature of light. Then, particulate nature of light, it is a particle, yung photoelectric effect ni Albert Einstein. O, nun, nanalo si Albert Einstein ng Nobel Prize because of his loss of photoelectric effect, pero wala siyang nakuhang Nobel Prize sa theory niya sa relativity. Okay, remember that, ha? Yung Nobel Prize ni Albert Einstein is the loss of photoelectric effect, not the theory of relativity. Okay. Okay. 55. The transfer of heat that takes place because of density difference, that is conviction. Mass difference, that is conviction. Conduction, our keyword here is direct contact. Yan yung conduction na heat transfer. Radiation naman. Um, the transfer of heat through waves, no, electromagnetic waves through space. So, for example, the sun na energy or oh, the heat from the sun that is transferred to us here on Earth through radiation, which is through space. The transfer of heat through the electromagnetic waves. Fission naman, this is referring to the splitting of the nucleus of an atom. And this is the concept behind the atomic bomb, right? The nuclear bomb. Fission of the nucleus. And when the nucleus is being, uh, when the nucleus split, so 
it would release a tremendous amount of energy. Okay? Yan yung fission. Alright. Uh, baka itanong din ang about the atomic bomb. Uh, kasi recently lang, no, yung movie uh, uh, about the nuclear bomb, who is the father of no atomic bomb, that is J. Robert Oppenheimer. No, you watch that movie, it is quite interesting. Okay, Oppenheimer. So, here we have examples of conduction. No, the heat from a hot coffee makes the cup itself hot. Oh, kasi ka direct yung contact. Yung metal spoon. Oh, metal spoon is a good heat conductor. So, a metal spoon becomes hot from the boiling water inside a cup. No, a direct contact. Thermal radiation from the sun or, or when you are near a fire. So, bakit nafe-feel mo rin yung yung heat from that fire it's because of radiation huh? thermal radiation transfer of heat through space and this one on the right side this is a uh, land breeze and a sea breeze okay this is convection example of convection no so mass or density difference the temperature difference and so cold breeze a sea breeze nangyayari to sa Araw, okay, uh, uh, in the morning, sea breeze. And land breeze naman, sa gabi siya nangyayari. Okay, and the differences. And the uh, um, air. No? So, this is an important concept as well. The sea breeze and the land breeze. Just remember that warm air rises and the cool air sinks. Yan, it creates a conviction cycle, yung difference ng temperature ng air. So, there is a transfer of heat, and that is conviction. Okay? Sige, 56. The energy supplied to a system in the form of heat minus the work done by the system is equal to the change in internal energy. This statement describes the... The first law of thermodynamics. So, mahalaga to. Who is the father of thermodynamics? That is Sadi Carnot. Ha, Carnot. So, let's take a look at our laws of thermodynamics. We have the zeroth law, which is about the temperature with two systems in equilibrium with a third system are in thermal equilibrium with each other. A, A plus B equals C. B plus C equals A. Therefore, A is equal to C. Okay, that's the zeroth law. First law, conservation of energy. Energy can change forms. But remember this, it is neither created nor destroyed. You cannot create, you cannot destroy energy. It is only transferred. Second law, that's entropy. So entropy is increasing in an isolated system. So, the heat transfer, it is always from hot to cold. Remember, ha? The heat flow, hot to cold. Yeah, and that's the second law. The third law, uh, the entropy of a system approaches a constant as temperature approaches absolute zero. That this is the lowest possible temperature of a substance, absolute zero, or zero Kelvin. But, remember... Wala pang absolute zero um, in the known universe or any laboratory that is the measure yung absolute zero. Okay? Because that's zero Kelvin, that is complete stillness. Wala na talagang movement, wala nang motion of particles. And we know that particle is always moving. Okay? Particles are always moving. Na, the, the Brownian motion. So, okay, that's the third law of thermodynamics a system approaches a constant as temperature approaches absolute zero okay 57 which refers to the kinetic energy or motion of gas particles that is the temperature okay the temperature we talk about heat and temperature. Heat, oh, that's the form of energy as measured in calories or joules and Remember this, that there is no coldness energy, huh? Uh, it is just absence of heat or 
di ba nga, wala namang darkness, technically walang darkness, it's just absence of light, alright? Or little lang yung amount of light. And same with the coldness, little lang yung amount of heat, right? So, wala talagang coldness. Okay, it is just a matter of how much heat an object has, okay? So, heat also is any object with temperature above 0 Kelvin has heat energy. Temperature naman, kapag sinabi natin temperature, that is the average kinetic energy of the particle. So, remember, kapag average kinetic energy, that is temperature. Kapag total kinetic energy, that is heat. Huh? Okay, going back to temperature, it is measured in Celsius, in Fahrenheit, in Kelvin, and in Rankine as well. Alright? Hot and cold are relative terms when we talk about temperature. Absolute zero is zero Kelvin. Uh, diba? Sanabi ko na to kanina, absolute zero is zero Kelvin. Okay, let's proceed to 58. What phenomenon is a result of the bending of light? Oh, bending, kapag bending, that is refraction. Refraction, bending, reflection, bouncing off or bouncing back of light. So, that's reflection. Kapag bending of light, we have refraction. So, yan yung mga keywords natin. 59, special relativity predicts that time dilation occurs when. Oh, special relativity, this is... The theory of Einstein. Okay? So, anin ba dito? It predicts that the time dilation occurs when objects are in motion. Siyempre, in motion. No? Diba? So, according to special relativity, time dilation occurs when objects move relative to each other at different velocities. Yan. The faster an object moves, remember this, the more times slows down for that object relative to a stationary observer. Diba nga si The Flash, no? Um, that, there is a scientific principle behind that. Kaya nga, diba, if nanonood ka ng The Flash, every time na namumove siya, parang the surrounding environment is moving very slowly. <laughs> because... Uh, the faster an object moves, the more times slows down for the object relative relative to a stationary observer. Alright? So, it is faster. I oh, know, the time is slower, pero kapag faster yung movement mo. Okay? So, that is special relativity. And when we talk about time, that's the fourth dimension according to Albert Einstein. Okay, sige, number 60. When water evaporates, it changes into which of the following states? Dapat memorize mo na itong phase changes. Of course, kapag nag-evaporate, syempre into gas, turning into gas. So, um, visualize this one, the enthalpy of system. So, the phase changes. So, solid to gas, sublimation, gas to solid, deposition, solid to liquid, that is... Melting, liquid to solid, freezing, liquid to gas, that is vaporization, gas to liquid, that is condensation, then we have plasma as well, gas to plasma, that is ionization, that was plasma to gas, recombination. Okay, memorize this, napakahalaga nito, and sayang ang questions like this one, kapag you will get this incorrectly, so dapat memorize mo na to, ha, the phase changes. Number 61, which energy conversion takes place when a toaster is switched on? Toaster, oh, diba? init. Oh, of course, the yung end product, yung last um, form of energy, syempre, thermal. No? Electrical to thermal. Kapag sinaksak mo na siya, iinit siya. Oh, electrical to thermal. Okay? Number 62, the following situations illustrate acceleration. Except. Okay, basahin natin ha, except A, a drum rolls down on an inclined plane. B, a body travels around a curved road with a constant speed of 20 meters per second. Letter C, the bus increases its speed from 70 um, kph to 120, oh, bakit naging M naman to, K, uh, kilometers per hour. 
Okay. Oh, same lang naman pala. Kilometers per hour. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Lutang ang beshi niyo. Letter D, a car travels at constant speed along a highway. Oh, Siyempre, ang hindi nag-accelerate is yung letter D. Kasi letter A, inclined plane. Di ba nga, inclined plane? Oh, Siyempre, mag-accelerate yan. Tapos letter B, oh, curve yung road. Curved road. Oh, that is an indication that there is a change in the velocity. There is acceleration. No, letter C, oh, hindi na pwede. Increases its speed nga. So, there is acceleration. Letter D lang ang hindi nag-illustrate ng acceleration. Okay? Kasi constant lang yung speed niya along a highway. Okay? 63. Oh, the gas laws naman. It states that the absolute pressure is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas. That is the Boyle's Law. Okay? In honor of Robert Boyle. Memorize the gas laws as well as the formula. Okay, understand their relationship. So, itong Boyle's laws, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Charles' laws naman, the volume is directly proportional to the temperature. Okay, and Gayle Sachs, pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. Then, we have the combined gas law and the ideal gas law, no? the PV and RT. So, know the value of these um equations okay so memorize nyo to okay again there there might be questions um problem solving questions related to the gas laws so dapat alam mo ang formula now isulat nyo to idikit nyo to sa yung mga bongbong <laughs> mga bongbong mga di mga walls <laughs> sorry para Uh, madali mong ma-remember, ma-visualize mo, no? may imagine mo siya ba? Makikita mo siya sa, sa iyong isip, char lang. 64, which of the following quantities is a scalar quantity? That is work. Okay, work. Scalar, uh, that is uh, magnitude only, scalar. Example of scalar, we have speed. Okay, kasi yung, yung vector is velocity or the acceleration. Mass, that is also scalar, the volume as well as the time. Kapag vector, both the magnitude and direction na siya. Okay, magnitude and direction, that's vector. And work is defined as a scalar because it depends on the net distance involved regardless of the direction. If the object winds up where it started, no work is performed because the distance is zero. Okay, remember that, ha? So, ibig sabihin yung distance natin, that is a, a scalar quantity. Okay, a scalar quantity. Tapos, yung displacement naman, that's a vector quantity. Alright? Sige, next. So, yung... Wave speed, uh, memorize the formula. A wave has a frequency of 50 hertz and a wavelength of 10 meters. What is the speed of the wave? Using this formula, speed is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So that is 500 meters per second. Memorize this, ha? the speed formula, the wave speed. Oh, Sometimes, given yung wavelength tsaka yung speed, oh, paano man kukunin yung frequency? Oh, you just have to simply uh, divide the speed and the wavelength. Okay? So, divide the speed with the wavelength. So, that's for frequency. Okay, number 66. Which of the following electromagnetic wave with the shortest wavelength? Okay, has the shortest wave wavelength. Oh, the electromagnetic waves, memorize this, the army box G, oh, yung x-rays. Kasi, the radio waves, oh, yan yung my longest na wavelength, pero my lowest frequency and the lowest energy. Ha, radio waves. Memorize this, ha, napakahalaga nito, the electromagnetic waves. From radio to microwave, infrared, then we have visible light, and ultraviolet, then we have x-rays and the gamma rays. And look at the options, depending on the options, ang shortest na wavelength is we have x-rays. Kapag may gamma sa options, syempre gamma ang shortest. 
which of the following is an endothermic process? Endothermic, ibig sabihin, nag absorb siya ng heat. Hindi siya nag-re-release, no? As opposed to exothermic, which is, so, oh, exo, outside. So, meaning, nag-re-release ng heat. Ang endo, it absorbs the heat. Example, subliming of both balls. So, ito. Endothermic reaction is, co is cooler than the surroundings. Tapos, kapag exothermic naman, uh, hotter than the surroundings kasi it releases heat. Okay? Condensation, freezing, mga exothermic ito na reaction, meaning nagre-release siya ng heat. Kaya nga, the water, the liquid water, uh, it would freeze. Ibig sabihin, nagre-release siya ng heat. Alright? The heat is transferred to the surrounding environment. So, idea 68, a wave in which the vibration is in the same direction as that in which the wave is traveling. An example of that is a sound wave that is longitudinal, longitudinal wave. Huh? Example of longitudinal waves is a sound wave. Kapag sa nabi natin transverse waves, o so perpendicular naman yung direction. So, example of that is light. Okay, Light is a transverse wave and sound waves are longitudinal waves. 69. Materials that do not allow the transmission of any light. Do not allow, ha? That is oh, opaque. Look at here. The transparent, oh, it allows the transmission of light. Translucent naman, oh, minimal lang na amount of light ang nag natatransmit. Tapos opaque, it does not allow. Alright, number 70. I guess we have 20 more items to go. An electric rice cooker operates at what 160 volts and uses a current of 8 amperes. What is the resistance of the rice cooker? Resistance. Uh, use the Ohm's law. That is 20. Okay, resistance ang ating inahanap. So, voltage divided by the current, which is 160 divided by 8, that is 20 ohms. So, memorize this, the VIR. Voltage is equal to the current times resistance. Next, the name of the chunk of rock as it travels from space to Earth's surface. Siyempre, ng Nagmula sa space, that's still meteoroid. Tapos, when it is in the atmosphere, and that is meteor, alright? Naboburn ang meteor sa mesosphere. Tapos, kapag hindi siya completely naboburn, and it reaches the Earth's surface, it is called meteorite. Remember that. 72. What is the age of the universe? Kapag universe, that is 13.7 billion years. Kapag Age of solar system, that is 4.5 billion. Kapag universe, 13.7. 73. Which sequence of organisms best represents the pyramid of energy from the base to the top? Okay. So, you might pause the video if you want to read the options. Okay. But I am going to reveal the answers na ha, without reading the options because this is a fast drill. So, pyramid from base to top, that is algae. Then we have zooplankton. Algae is a producer. Tapos, the zooplankton is the primary consumer. Then we have the small fishes. Kinakain nila yung zooplankton. Tapos, yung small fishes. Kinakain ng large fishes. Tapos, we eat the large fishes. So, humans. So, yan. Yung sequence. Correct na sequence. Hindi naman pwedeng mauna yung humans kasi hindi naman tayo producers okay sige next uh, here oh ito yan the energy pyramid and i uh, remember the 10% rule so yung only 10% uh -huh, of energy is transferred to the next organism remember that no napaka konti lang okay number 74 Oh, nandito na pala siya. <laughs> Only 10% of the energy stored in an organism can be passed on to the next tropic level. So, ano nangyari doon sa other uh, remaining energy? So, the rest is eliminated as heat. Okay? Eliminated as heat. So, dito, 
the producers, we've got 30,000 joules of energy. Tapos yung nakukuha ng rabbits ng primary consumers is only 3,000. Because 10% of 30,000 is 3,000. Tapos yung secondary consumers, 300 joules na lang ang nakukuha niya galing sa primary consumer. Tapos sa secondary naman, ang nabibigay niya lang sa tertiary consumer is only 30 joules. Okay? Kasi yun lang yung 10% of 300. No? 30. So, napakaliit ng ng energy. Kaya nga, yung mga top sa food chain, um, it requires huge amount of food. Gaya nito. Uh, kasi, konti lang yung nakukuha na energy. Kaya, tayo, human beings, much better that we directly eat the producers. We directly eat vegetables, no plants, kasi mas malaki ang energy na nakukuha. Alright? 75? Sige. Kaya natin to. <laughs> Laban lang. I spell it that didn't melt but still land on the ground as a solid that is sleet. Kapag I spill it, that is the sleet. O, ito yung mga different types of precipitation. We have the grupel, the hail, and sleet. But tayo dito sa Philippines, um, ang pinaka-common obviously is the rain lang. Okay, the rain. Wala tayong snow, wala tayong um, mga ganito na type of precipitation. But there are instances, na very rare case lang, na nangyayari siya sa ibang areas ng Philippines. Pero hindi always, of course, rare nga ang case. So, palagi is always rain yung ating precipitation. So, again, 76. Which of the following is not a common metamorphic rock? Memorize new ang types of rocks as well as the examples, common examples. So, this one, memorize nyo to. And this, these are the common examples. So, for igneous, we have granite, um, scoria, pumice, and obsidian. Sedimentary naman, that's a sandstone, limestone, shale, or shale. It is sedimentary, kaya yan yung sagot natin. It's not a common metamorphic rock because shale is a sedimentary. Tapos, we have conglomerate at gypsum. Then, for metamorphic naman, o oh, yung marble, na slate, na quartzite, tsaka knees, oh, metamorphic yan na mga rocks, ha? So, memorize this one. Okay, 77. What is studied under the meteorology? Meteorology, that is typhoons. Ha, hindi meteors. <laughs> typhoons. Uh, basahin niya lang itong definition of meteorology. So, Yeah. That is studied under the meteorology is typhoons, yung weather patterns natin, including the moisture, temperature, the cloud coverage, pressure, and other meteorological conditions. So, kasali siya sa meteorology. And this is the revised definition of the super typhoon category. This is according to the pag-asa. So, yeah, kapag less than 62 kilometers per hour, that's considered under the category of tropical depression 62 to 88 tropical storm 89 to 117 that is severe tropical storm and kapag typhoon that's 118 to 184 and magiging super typhoon siya if it is 185 or beyond okay 78 the first step in scientific method is first step that is Siyempre, to define the problem. Napakahalaga ng scientific method because this is the foundation of all the research of all the scientific na discovery. Kailangan ng scientific method, ha? Of course, observation. Mag-uuna yung observation. Uh, if walang observation, uh, we have to define the problem. Okay? Define the problem. Dapat, uh, alam natin kung ano yung problema. Kasi ang hirap kapag hindi natin alam o kapag very vague yung problema kasi ang hirap humanap ng solution doon sa problem na yun kapag hindi natin alam kung ano yung problema. So, we can apply the scientific method in our daily lives sa lahat-lahat ng mga nangyayari sa buhay natin. We can apply the scientific method. No? No, kung ano may yung problema, dapat intindihin, alamin natin kung ano yung problema. Tapos, doon na natin mahanapan ng solusyon. No? Yung mga ng posibleng solusyon sa problema. O, oh, yan yung una dapat. To define the problem. Hindi pwedeng, 
Ah, hindi necessarily na to experience the problem. Pwede ka namang mag-observe lang. Diba? You have to observe. Oh. You define mo yung problem. Hindi pwede experience mo talaga. Okay? Sige, 79. Science provides knowledge through disciplined observation and which is not a characteristic of scientific assertion. Oh, look at the options. Very obvious. Siyempre, yung hearsay. Ha? Hearsay. Hindi pwede mga chismis lang na ang ang result mo no you need to conduct an experiment I mean, you need to have empirical support you need to have data that is being collected you know experimental results so look at the let's take a look at the scientific method again so kapag na define mo na yung problem you can you can create a hypothesis o paano mo i-test ang hypothesis you will conduct an experiment Tapos, yung result ng experiment mo na yan, you can draw conclusion from it. And, of course, the result, you will share the result. And then, on, pag may na-observe ka na naman, may wrong recommendations, yan, no, the cycle begin again. So, again, her say ha, ang not a characteristic, hindi pwedeng chismis lang, no, kailangan mo ng concrete na evidence, kailangan mong mag-experiment bago ka maka-conclude. Number 80. Alright! <laughs> the best graph to use if I want to compare the price of six different cars, comparison, that is bar graph. Line graph, this is an, a good graph to show progress. Oh, kaya nga, ba? Yung grades from quarter 1 to quarter 4, oh, line graph ang mas maigi doon kasi it show it shows progress bar graph comparison pie graph naman o oh, ipart to a, to a whole so ano yung percentage niya compare comparing it to the whole right scatter plot oh, this is about the relationship kung gaano siya ka close if it is um closer to form a straight line ibig sabihin close lang yung relationship nila Right, the scatter plot. Okay, 81. We're almost done. What is the scientific benefit of utilizing science in the field of medicine? Oh, syempre, medicine controlling the spread of diseases. Okay, so uh, you read all the options, ha? Oh, hindi. Basta basta lang sasagot. <laughs> but as for me right now, I'm answering directly, but. I want you to, I want to remind you that in the board exam you read all the options carefully. Oh, kasi nga di ba, in the field of medicine oh by makita mo na yung letter D ay about medication. No, oh, hindi mo na titingnan yung the rest of the options. So, uh yun yung sasagot mo which is wrong kasi eliminating the use of medications. Mhm. Mm or letter C reducing the needs for healthcare professionals kailangan bang i-reduce or letter A, promoting alternative treatment treatments. Mm. Siyempre, the best answer here would be controlling the, the spread of the disease. Oh. Kaya nga, yung sa COVID-19, oh, the vaccination, it is one way to control the, the spread or to lessen the damage na nagagawa ng pandemic. No? Kailangan nating magpa-vaccine. Diba? Viral infection, it needs vaccination and if it is a bacterial infection kailangan naman is antibiotics sige na let's proceed to 82 cup like receptacle made of porcelain used for heating inside the lab this is crossable lumabas to sa time namin last march a cup like receptacle so there might be questions about laboratory equipment and how to use that equipment description of that equipment so dapat uh, study nyo na rin yung mga laboratory equipment, ha? Sige, 83. Why should educators teach science skills to younger students? You read the options and you select the best answer. And our best answer for this one would be to help, okay? Ano na, not to help. To, <laughs> to uh, our society needs more scientists. Starting them early may encourage them to choose a career in science. Okay? So, yan. Napakahalaga ng ating 
ng role ng mga scientist. No? Kaya kailangan natin ito ang science sa younger students. And napaka-crucial, napaka-critical ng role ng nating mga teachers, especially sa elementary education. no Kasi dyan nagsisimula ang interest ng bata. So, kapag na encourage siya ng science teacher niya, so most probably she, he or she will like science. So, that is the case for me. Yan yung nangyari sa akin. Gusto ko yung science teacher ko sa elementary as well as in high school. So, yun. Sunod-sunod na yun. Kaya, in college, kumuha ko ng science-related na course at saka ito yung naging majorship ko. No? Science. Kaya napakahalaga ng role nating mga teachers in shaping the minds of our learners. So, start them young. Start them early. Okay, 84. In your attempt to determine which is denser, oil or water, you mix 25 ml of oil with 25 ml of water. What helpful qualitative data can you derive from the setup? Quality, ha? So, ibig sabihin, wala na yung about numbers. So, it's not letter A or letter D. So, it is between B or C. Now, remember that we are talking about the density. So, of course, our answer would be letter C. Though letter B is, the statement of letter B is correct, that oil did not mix with water. Yes, that's true. Pero, we are looking at the density. Okay, which is denser, oil or water? Siyempre, oil is on top of the water. Ibig sabihin, the denser one is the water. Okay? Less dense yung oil. 85. A scientist conducted an experiment to determine how the amount of salt in a body of water affects the number of plants that can live in the water. In this experiment, the independent variable is the amount of salt in the water. Kasi dyan nakadepende yung um, number of plants that can live in the water. So, it is important as well na alam mo kung paano mag-determine ng independent, ng independent, uh, ng independent at saka ng dependent variable as well as the constant variable. Independent, that is the cause. The dependent is the effect. Okay? Oh, then we have the control, var control variables. So, in this, uh, for example, in this setup, experimental setup, the, oh, does red light affect plant growth? So, yung independent variable niya, niya is the color of the light. No, red and saka the yellow. Tapos, yung dependent variable niya, ano ba yung effect ng light? O ano ba yung measure mo? Yung plant height. Tapos, the control variable, so, ito yung constant, constant sa yung experimental setup. So, same lang yung amount of water na ibibigay mo sa halaman. Same lang yung, yung type ng soil. The temperature, you have to monitor that as well. Tapos, daytime and nighttime, kung kailan mo siya uh, didiligan. Yan. Kailan mo i-control. Kailan mo i-measure yung temperature. Yan. So, that's the control variables. No? The constant variable in an experiment. Alright. 86. Nuclear power. Sinabi ko na to kanina, nuclear power, that's nuclear fission. Okay, splitting of the atomic nucleus. Kaya, napakalaki ng energy na nare-release. Kahit napakaliit lang, no, nung sa atomic bomb, sa atomic bomb, uh, the little boy and the fat man, napakaliit lang ng bomba na yun, pero the impact is huge because of this one, the splitting of nucleus. Number 87, which among the following world events sparked international debate against the nuclear power? That's the Chernobyl accident. Okay, the Chernobyl accident. And even up until now, the effect is still um, under study, under uh, being under, uh, being studied kasi uh, yung mga tao na ninirahan doon near in that of that area is yung mga uh, descendants nila nagkaka-develop ng cancer because of the radiation from this incident. Okay? So, ang Chernobyl ngayon is para siyang ghost, no? Ghost town. Kasi napaka-radioactive ng environment. So, kaya, maraming debate about 
Oh, diba? We have a nuclear power plant here in Bataan. So, there's been a lot of debate going on as to if we're going to run nuclear power again or not because of this uh, incident. But the Department of Science and Technology, the DUST, is promoting the use of the nuclear energy because it's, it is an alternative energy. Kasi lang, maliit lang na radioactive element ang kailangan natin and huge amount of energy na ang pwede niyang i-release. Pero kailangan lang ng proper regulation, of course, and a huge budget because it is really expensive. Okay, this is the Chernobyl accident. 88. Which among the following is the single most important effect of radiation exposure on human health? That is cancer. Okay, cancer, radiation. The following are solid waste products which can be recycled except, of course, yung mga leftover na pagkain. Pwede mo ba bang i-recycle yan? Oh, ito, pet bat, pet, PET bottles, the beverage cans, the PVC materials. Oh, pwede mo yung i-recycle. 90, the last slide. <laughs> ano no, the last question. At the level of people's homes, which among the following interventions can best help in solid waste management? Remember ha? Sa bahay lang natin. Solid waste management. Siyempre, uh, isusort natin yung ating um, mga trashes. Backyard burning of trash. Oh, hindi magandang magburn. Lalo-lalo na nasa bahay, no? Composting. Oh, near sa residences. O oh, if hindi siya handled properly, pwede siya maka-cause ng sakit. ba? Itong 4 o'clock habit. Oh, this is a sort of a habit na at 4 o'clock, kailangan mo maglinis to prevent uh, dengue. Oh, ito yun, during the time na may uh, dengue. Uh, kumakalat yung dengue. No? Kasi ang daming mosquitoes. Especially during uh, rainy season. Oh, marami, ma ano, marami yung mosquito. Because they have a place to breed. So, every 4 o'clock, this is a community sort of uh, program for the community na dapat sabay-sabay tayo o maglinis <laughs> every 4 o'clock. So, that's that's the concept behind this one, the 4 o'clock habit. Then, the best answer would be trash sorting prior to disposal. Okay? So, I sort natin ang ating trashes. So, I just want to share this one. This is the last slide. This is my power notebook. So, sinulat ka to sa aking notebook. The content of your character is your choice. Day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. O, sinulat ko talaga dito, future top nature. Kasi iniisip ko na, dati pa, na I will be a top nature. I will top the board exam. O, yan. Yan yung choice ko every day. Yan yung goal ko, kaya choice ko every day na I have to study. Then, the Lord cannot give what you are praying for if you are not preparing for it. Kaya paghandaan natin ang board exam. Mahalaga lahat ng preparation mo dyan na ginagawa mo ngayon. That is very much important. And of course, I can do all things because the Lord is with me. Man maniwala ka, mag manalig ka sa Diyos, ha? So, yeah. I really hope this video finds you well. And I am sorry if ngayon lang ulit ako nakapag-upload because I was busy because of the opening of the academic year. And I moved from place to place. So, iba na yung setup ko ngayon. Iba yung location ko ngayon. I moved to a different home. <laughs> So, yeah. Thank you for listening and for watching this video. I am praying that everyone who watched this will top the board exam. <laughs> will top. Will pass and top the board exam. Hindi naman po lahat top not sure, di ba? Like, imagine yung lahat na nag-take top not sure. <laughs> ano yan? That is impossible. So, hindi po di yan. That's why we need to exert extra effort kasi nakikita din ng Diyos kung ano yung ginagawa natin, ha? So, sige na. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. And I hope this helps you. And see you on the next episode. Bye-bye!